Welcome to Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation. Well, what a time to be alive. Here we are now for week five of Friday Night Lights here on Fox 12. We're live in Eugene after the Ducks in Michigan State, but first, our big game on the prep gridiron. Our Craig Burnback reports from Lake Oswego, where the 4-0 Lakers welcome the 4-0 Tualatin Timberwolves to open up Three Rivers League competition. Well, Nick, no matter which polls or rankings you looked at, tonight's game between Lake O and Tualatin was a battle of two top five teams. And in the end, it was the team who controlled the ground game that's going to be moving up in the polls. Lake Oswego came out running, and you know what? They never stopped running. It's 7 and nothing Lake O when LaMarcus Bell says, not anymore. He's going to take the handoff, and he's going to get, 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 get gone. 76 yards to the house, and it was 14 nothing Lakers in a flash. It's 14-7 when it's the quarterback's time to shine. That's Hudson Curlin looking like Superman as he dives in from 12 to make it 21-7 home team. Twan's offense would try to keep pace. Here's the BYU-bound Nolan Keeney hitting Kalen Simonolik for the 42-yard score, and it was just a 21-16 Laco lead at the half. In the second half, the Laco ground game would put this thing to bed. Here's Hudson Curlin scoring his third of the day. But don't forget Bell, as he's going to break some ankles, break some hearts, break off a little something, something. That's his third touchdown of the night. And Laco is going to roll over to Alton, 45 to 31. How's this win feel? Feels amazing. Uh, we went into this like this, this could go either way. It could be a shootout, it could be a blowout, anyway. But we knew we can go in there, we could win this, and continue our season, 5-0. Nick, just how good was Laco's running game? Well, all six of their touchdowns came on the ground, and LaMarcus Bell rushed for way over 200 yards. Reporting from Lake Oswego High School, Craig Burnback, Friday Night Lights. Love of those big games, live up to the billing. Top-ranked team in the state, always those hunters and hunted, unbeaten Westland Lions, a Three Rivers League opponent, Tiger Tigers, Lions up 28-0, make it 35. Baird Gilroy, boy, always in full control. Will Ingle there. Then Gilroy, another one to the big target. Those Vandenbrink boys, country strong. That's Zach Vandenbrink. Break a little tackle and get on into payday Friday. Gilroy, a generous guy with the pigskin. On the move, it's MJ Kinnebrew. He can do too. Westland remains perfect, 55 to nothing. Week six, we'll see West Lynn at Lake Ridge Tiger. Welcomes Lake Us. We go. More FNL and the TRL. Oregon City's Pioneer Memorial Stadium. A gem of a joint to be on a fall night. Pio's 4 0 Lake Ridge there. The guys in red and black. Really got the first of the night. Benjamin Schneider. And that field general seems like forever there. Pacer set the pack, though. Drew Weiler. Gonna spin one on the move. Shanko Kornachuk right in front of my guy, Zach. Arms wide open, opening score. Boy, Spencer Phillips' kids play tough defense to Trayson Edelman. Transfer out of Sherwood, chopping him up, sack him, stack him. Back to Weiler. That proud family name by the lake. Jaden Tregesser, correct call, sir. Yak. One after catch. All Lake Ridge, 36 0. Pacers now get their shot at the Lions. Pioneers roll to Tualatin. Metro League opening night, one and three sunset, two and two mountainside. America, the beautiful. A salute to service night for the Apollos. They're always the best that they can be. Boy, a wild first half. Just back and forth along Cornell. Mavs on fourth and goal from the 12. Cade Mitchell, so cool. So two, Josiah Agnamel, the sophomore. Heck yeah, he's in. Mountainside touchdown. But Sunset firing right back. Their senior tailback, Nathaniel Kim. Just an animal. 24-yard scoot to score. Only guy to tackle him. His own buddies in the end zone. That ain't right. Kim tied at seven. You're good, dude. Second quarter of Paul, quarterback. Kind of fooled me. In fact, he did. I was behind the lens there. Marcus Hom, what a sell job. The QB keeper for 51 yards down to the five yard line. Next snap, next score. Number five, Owen Scholes putting the purple pride out in front, 14 to 7. Now the Mavs, though, have the reply with a guy named Madden. Boom! You know he must be good. Madden 
Tanabasa doing some of his own blocking along the journey. It's level at 14. Sunset with the ball back. A minute to go before half. Hom, Matthew Lohman, chuck up a snag of 41 yards into the red zone. Soon, Sunset would be in the end zone. Hom fakes me out again. And cool hand Luke Bergman, nearly a freshman, follows up seven at halftime, but Keenan Lowe's kids hammered down from there. 49-29 for MHS. Mavs next invade Jesuits, Cronin Field. The Apollos pull the chariots over to Rock Creek with a rivalry with Westview. How about a pink out at South Salem High with unbeaten Sprague. Rivals, its allies against cancer. Saxon's legendary head coach, Scott Dufo, now retired, honored at the Guido. Ducati Witherspoon, honored with a killer name. The Island Boy Camp Kid, Rips, one of the best from the state, Beck Olson. In for the score, 35 nothing visitors. They're just flowing. Kenya Johnson, he threw a touchdown pass a week ago. A little trick or treat. This one, a 24 yard run by the super senior. It's 42 nothing. Carter Lavelle gonna make it on the highlight tape too. Sprague is 6 0, 48 to nothing. They'll now both play on Thursday. Sprague back home to Kaiser with South Medford while the Saxons bust South Eugene to get Sheldon. How about game of the night in 5A? The unbeaten Central Panthers at 4-0 against the defending state champs from Wilsonville. Wildcats licking those wounds after a loss to Lake Ridge in 6A a week ago. Boy, they take on all challengers in the 9-7-0-7-0. The kids from Independence brought the intensity. JT Gerard, Jackson Stevens, sophomore to senior, gain of 40, tripped up at the 10. The Wildcat boys bring the pressure, keeping them out of the end zone. That would force a field goal. Cats on the prowl the other way. Beaver baseball commit. Mark Weeper, such a stud. Behind the plate, under center, Luke Parley. 12-yard game. Then, as solid as a rock as it comes. Weeper, Nick Crowley. Nick knows the dome. Touchdown, Wilsonville. Next Wildcats possession. They're driving again. But Central bows up to break up the pass. That's Brandon Ball having a nose for one. Break it up there. But Wilsonville, so hard to contain for too long. Read them and weep them. Weeper, Riddick Molitore, the junior, packs it away. 35-yard getaway. 42-3 Ville in the end. Central now heads home to host Silverton and Independence. Wilsonville keeps it at Randall with the Canby Cougars on Thursday. And it may have been the league open in the 3A Greater St. Helens League, but this Week 5 class between Kelso and Evergreen could very well decide the GSHL champ next month. Happy belated 50-year-old birthday to McKenzie Stadium. Another doubleheader at the Municipal Field in Clark County. Highlanders Plainsman, both 3-1 and one coming in. Late first quarter, our first look at the weekly Evergreen Explosion play from Big Play James. James Bethune Jr. making the family proud. Teammate coach two. For the one to the other side, 99 yards and a tackle ain't one. For the Blacks and Gold, 28-7 Plainsman at halftime. The Highlanders have such history with EHS. Triton Hagdahl Daniel made a play he'll always recall. Rewind this one. Pick six for 40 by the senior linebacker. Kelso within two scores. Later third, Aiden and Tony. Watch the senior. Gonna switch directions. Push the pile across the goal line. A 10-yard touchdown. One score game, 28-21. Fourth quarter now. Crunch time for big play James. Junior like an old man. 16 yards and in. It's 35-21 Evergreen. Kelso would score again. Pulls in a touchdown. Oh, but there goes that man again. We've seen a long one, a short one, and a middle distance runner too. Give him 56 for six more. Wild finish. Evergreen a winner. 42-35. Highlanders next get back to the Big K with Prairie. Evergreen will welcome Shelton, a 4-30 kick from the Mac. FNL and Cougar Country, the 1A Trico League. Seton Catholic Cougars out of Vancouver hosting Fort Vancouver. And those Cougs can do it all. A little on the ground. Jacob Williams looking like John L. Williams. No neck roll here. The senior with the first of many scores on the night for Seton Catholic. Colton Gesser, though, boy, he's got all the right answers. That's Jason Gesser's kid, a Cougar by blood. Riker, Grellis, a little r and &R TD. He can drive 55. What a night, what a season so far for the Cougs. Colton with that cannon right here, going to have a little X marks the spot. Gesser, Xavier Crank, cranking it up, 20 to nothing. Gesser and Crank would do it again. You kind of get the idea. All Cougs all the time. 57-0 in the end. 
Seaton remains perfect. Now focuses on a trip to Kalama. Fort V will be home at Central Center. Friday Night Lights back in Oregon at the 2A level. You're never nervous with Jervis. The unbeaten Jervis Cougars at Salem Academy, those Crusaders. The home team got it started on defense. Seth Duman, just a freshman, making that kind of upperclassman kind of play. Can't play center field and pick it off. Beautiful turf out there at Salem Academy, as always. Lots of dudes can play two-way in two-way football. In fact, really kind of everybody does. Duman now on the carry for the first down. Looking slick in those greens. So we got two plays, we got two Duman highlights. Save the tape, Mom. Same drive at Salem Academy's Taiki Kawamura. Passing, Duman receiving. That's a great catch. Play of the week nominee for Sunday six picks. And Kawamura. Luke Shinlanda, a touchdown, 8-0, Sater Nation after a two-point success. Visiting Cougars, though, can cut their way behind their big cat. That's Johnny Mariano. Run, Johnny, run. Johnny be good, he did. Mariana chunking the yardage, down the markers, take the chains with you. Mariano, the capper. What was also then a two-point try is good, too. Eight all, 60-7 to seven on the night, a big third quarter for GA Sats. Jervis now enjoys bye week for getting back home with Regis. Academy will be at Regis this Friday. You know, Friday Night Lights aren't just for the high school kids anymore. It's also the big kids, like the Big Ten on Fox. We're live in Eugene now with Dylan Scott, who witnessed sixth-ranked Oregon's first ever Big Ten Conference home game against Michigan State. Boy, Dylan, Jonathan Smith, Spartans, more than three touchdown dogs, and the line proved to be about right. Nick, absolutely, and of course it was an electric night here at Autzen Stadium under the lights here. Number three, Oregon, far from perfect in that 31-10 convincing win over Michigan State and a couple of well-known faces coming back to town here in Oregon. But Oregon also did a lot of right in this victory as they improved to 5-0 and and a crucial tune-up as they get the yes, Ohio State Buckeyes coming in next Saturday. History in Eugene, the first Big Ten home showdown in Autzen Stadium. Number three, Oregon hosting Michigan State, which includes former Beavers turned Spartans, coach Jonathan Smith and quarterback Aiden Childs. Sloppy ball from the Ducks early, but they find their footing sort of late in the first quarter. It's scoreless when QB Dylan Gabriel hooks up with Trayshawn Holden. Look at this from his keister. Great catch right there. Sets up number eight. For six, going to call his own number on the keeper. 7-0 Oregon. Tough day for the counterpart. Former Oregon Staters, especially Childs, does not report a touchdown. Meanwhile, the Ducks with five sacks, and they hold Sparty to just 250 total yards. Now that is what we call defense. To the second quarter, Jordan James and co. working the green and yellow ground game. Fitting on stomping out cancer night. He powers his way in for the 14-0 lead. He goes for 166 of the Ducks' 213 rushing yards. Now late in the half, Gabriel going to the air this time. Evan Stewart in the corner for one of his two touchdown passes. 257 yards, two touchdowns, two picks for the super talented Southpaw senior. 21-0 Oregon at half. The number three Ducks cruise the 31-10 win over the Spartans in their Big Ten home debut, improving to 5-0 with a top 10 showdown against the Buckeyes on tap next Saturday. You know, I think uh, any time that you can, you know, play a physical game like that and uh, control the rushing attack on both sides of the ball, it's going to create success. You know, clean relatively on, on special teams play, really good on third down. Uh, still some moments there for growth. You know, in the red zone, we got to go come away with points. we got to go score. Uh, that didn't show up a couple times tonight, and it, it could hurt you later on in the season. So that's something we'll definitely attack uh, moving forward uh, this year. But overall, proud of our guys' performance and the growth. Being aggressive, that's throwing it and running it aggressively. I think that's uh, something you got to have um, in college football. And you know, it's belief and trust in one another. And then, you know, me to finish, you know, in, in that situation. Now, again, growth, the popular term at the press conference post game here tonight. And again, this matchup with Ohio State going to be crucial next week for both teams. Really a huge litmus test. A lot the Oregon Ducks did well offensively and defensively tonight. But they might have to play that perfect game when Ohio State comes in here next Saturday, Nick. Yeah, Dylan, the Ducks wanted the big time. Now they're number six. They really get it next Saturday. Primetime game, third-ranked Ohio State comes to town over there with our friends at NBC. Happy you got your first Autzen experience. We won't tell everybody where you went to school. It's in the state of Ohio. 
Yeah, I mean, there's another OSU, right? And we're not always talking Oregon State here. Uh, you know, Buckeye proud, but obviously so excited for the game next week. Two great teams, undefeated, top 10 showdown. We mentioned the newcomers to the Big Ten against some of the old guard, obviously, in Ohio State. So still plenty of season after a game like this, but you want to know how you stack up and interesting to see how a Dylan Gabriel plays on this biggest stage against a Ryan Day-led offense and defense here. I think both teams with a lot to prove, Nick. They're going to lay it on the line next Saturday at Austin. was electric tonight. That's going to go up about tenfold next week. I don't know if Liam and I are going to be able to hear because today uh, <laughs> our eardrums already blown out. So imagine what next week is going to be down here in Eugene as well. No doubt about that, man. As, as as bad as Friday night college football games are for us kind of old school traditionalists, how about next week a 4.30 kickoff? That is perfect. Safe travels back home, man. Still ahead, a great day to be a state and eagle. We'll take you to the ribbon cutting of the new Tide Heart Memorial Fitness Center that was 100% built and paid for by the community to honor an American hero. Plus, our high school spotlight takes us to the volleyball court at North Salem. We'll bump, we'll set, we'll spike with the sister act for the Vikings, stars of stage and show. And we'll get back out to our big game and our cheer of the night with Craig and L.O. Week 5, Friday Night Lights, back right after this on Fox 4. You're watching Friday Night Lights on Fox 12 Oregon, presented by Pacific Office Automation.